Miami and it's opening day of Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival 2021. This year the festival runs from July 15th through November 20th. I'm going to take you on a full tour of the festival. We're going to see all the activities, all the entertainment and every single food booth. This year there are a total of 30 food booths including 8 new ones. Along with that we're going to see Refreshment Port, Refreshment Outpost, the Funnel Cake Stand and 4 Joffrey's booths and they all have festival offerings. Out of the 30 booths that are offered this year, only 21 of them will be open today and the rest will be open on October 1st. So make sure you come and check back here in October to see those booths. Um, if you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. But let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's go get into some hijinks. When you first walk in, you have this really cute Epcot food and wine photo op with Remy from Ratatouille. But before you actually go into the park, you're gonna come over here and grab yourself a festival passport. The festival passport is your guide to the festival. The festival passport is gonna show you what all the activities are, what all the entertainment is, and all of the menus at each of the food booths. And on top of it, at the very, very back, it's your first little game of the festival. This is the Emile's Fromage Montage Emile from Ratatouille. And it's basically a food scavenger hunt. They do something like this every festival. And you're gonna go to each of these five booths listed and get the item listed. They're gonna give you a sticker that you're gonna put over here in each spot. And then you're gonna go to Shimmering, Shimmering Sips for a prize. There's a lot of things I want to try today, so I'm going to come back tomorrow and do the Emile's Fromage Montage. So look out for that to see if it's worth doing. When you get to Spaceship Earth, you're going to turn left toward Mission Space because that's where some of the festival offerings begin. Across from Mission Space and next to Mouse Gears is our first Joffrey's location. This location is offering for the festival the Coca Cold Brew. It's Kona Mocha topped with whipped cream and drizzled with chocolate for $6.39. Our next booth could be a little hidden, so I wanna show you where it is. You're gonna go past Test Track and you're gonna make a left and you'll see the Cool Wash location, which is closed here, but next door to it is the Donut Box. The Donut Box offers a variety of donuts. Last year they did donut holes and this year they are doing actual full-size donuts. They also have that delicious black and white coffee cocktail, which I had last year. I highly recommend that. They are also doing this donut box for $16. You get a pack of four. You get the candy jar donut, the sriracha glazed donut, and two of the daily donuts, which will change every day. Here is the donut case. You have that candy bar donut, you have a black forest donut, a lemon blueberry donut, and the sriracha donut. This is the donut box. Each donut costs $4 when you do the donut box. I love the box itself. It's branded for food and wine. Individually, the donuts are $5 each, but when you do it with the donut box, you save a dollar on each individual donut. First is that candy bar donut. This looks so sugary. Oh wow, that's delicious. There's a lot of chocolate in the center of the donut itself. This one is definitely for you sugar lovers. That is just so sugary, but it's very good. Next up is that lemon blueberry. Ooh, it's got lemon filling on the inside. I'm ready for this one. That is delicious. That lemon filling on the inside is absolutely spectacular. This one is not like crazy sweet. I figured I was gonna like this one the best. The icing on the top, delicious, and I love the actual, there's actual blueberries on here. This is a great donut. This is the Black Forest Donut. This is one of the donuts of the day, so this might be here when you are here, and it might not be. And it looks like there's some cherries on top. Let's dig in. For some reason, this donut tastes different than the other ones. Um, like the actual donut itself, but the flavors are pretty nice. I really like the cherries with the chocolate. It's very chocolatey. So if you're not really into too much chocolate, this probably isn't for you. But I, I, the best part for me is all the cherries. Lastly, we have the sriracha donut. I am so curious about this one. All right, here we go. Sriracha donut time. As a person that loves spicy food, this was not good. <laughs> I did not like this combination at all. It really just tasted like there was sriracha on a donut and it, it just didn't work for me. I don't know. It, it was like trying to be sugary but trying to be hot and it 
it's not for me. Let me know if you try this and what you think of it because I think this is probably something that people are either going to love or not like at all. We're going to take a quick detour. We're going to walk down from the donut box into the Epcot experience because there is actually a food booth in here. And then when we're done, we're going to come back up this bridge right here and we're going to go back toward Future World. Brew Wing is a brand new booth this year inside of the Epcot Experience. Here is where you can get a wide variety of different types of wings, garlic parmesan wings, barbecue wings, teriyaki, buffalo, mango habanero. They have cheese flatbread, pepperoni flatbread. They have some beer and they have some ciders. They're not draft, they are canned, but you can do a flight of either beer or cider as well. I ended up getting the mango habanero wings because Disney doesn't really do a lot of spicy food, so I'm super curious to see like how hot these really are um, and if they're any good, considering this is a new booth. I'd love trying all the new stuff here, so I'm ready to dig in. What's so great about the brewing being in the Epcot experience, you get to be inside in the air conditioning and there's indoor seating and it's just really nice and comfortable. The wings came with a packet of Ken's Ranch. I'm not really uh, into putting ranch on my wings. I like just kind of like having them on their own. So here they are. I kind of like it. I, it's a, a really light mango habanero. It's really not that spicy at all. Um, I've had really, really spicy mango habaneros in the past. I'm not surprised Disney doesn't really do spicy. I actually think it has like a really nice um, flavor, like the nice uh, glaze over it. It's nice and crispy on the outside. It's overall a good wing. I think it's a great addition to the festival as well. And being inside the Epcot experience is a huge plus. A little update as I was eating it, it did get a little hotter. Um, personally, I don't still think it's like too crazy hot, but if you're not into spice, definitely go for like the teriyaki or something, or like the garlic parmesan if you really want the wings. Back up the path from once we came, and we're gonna see our next booth. Flavors of Fire. This was here last year. This is also part of Emile's Fromage Montage. This is across from the little playground area, just so you know where it is. Here's the menu. I've had a lot of things on this menu. The corned beef corner root was very delicious. The chimichurri up a fence was also very delicious. And their swine brine is so cool and unique. It features Jim Bean bourbon and it has a piece of pork on top of the drink. If you're doing Emile's fromage montage, you're gonna get the corned beef corner root from here. Walking now, going across the park toward the Imagination Pavilion. Across the park, adjacent to the Imagination Pavilion is Earth Eats, brought to you by the Impossible Meat brand. So it's plant-based meat. I did have the Impossible sliders last year. I thought it was really tasty. Um, I think it's really fun to try the Impossible uh, meat brand, the, the plant-based meat options. This is new this year, the Impossible 3 Bean Chili. Someone just walked by with it and they said it's absolutely delicious. Um, we're gonna skip it this year, but if you have tried this, uh, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments, or if you would wanna try any of these options at all. They also have a spiced apple twinings of London chai tea, so you can get it non-alcoholic or you can get it with whiskey for $11. Wanted to show you real quick next to Earth Eats is this really beautiful, place where you can come and sit and eat. It has these beautiful flowers. This is turf over here, it has a little patio area, super nice. After Earth Eats in the little garden area is a brand new booth. This is called the Noodle Exchange. A lot of people end up missing this booth, but to remember where it is, you just have to remember it's across or adjacent to the Starbucks. The Noodle Exchange is offering traditional spicy Vietnamese pho with shaved beef, enoki mushrooms, and Thai basil. They're also offering char siu pork udon with enoki mushrooms, bok choy, and soy pickled egg. And they're offering shrimp and coconut curry, rice noodles with shiitake mushrooms and Thai basil. And they have tofu with enoki mushrooms and Thai basil. They also have A to Z Riesling and Playa Linda Brewing Company Ya Upan Brothers Green Tea Pale Ale. That is a lot of words. I ended up getting the char siu pork udon with enoki mushrooms, bok choy, and soy pickled egg. It looks so good. I'm really excited to try this. This is literally soup and it's <laughs> a million degrees out, but it looks really, really good. I'm gonna get a little bit of everything. The pork is so good. That is so good. It does make the soup part very salty. 
I think everything in the bowl is super delicious. I would probably just get a fork and kind of eat everything out because that soup is really overwhelmingly salty. Um, and it's this is super, super filling. Um, I think this is actually still a good addition, but for me, I, I think it's just a little, little too salty, but no complaints on the actual food itself. Behind the noodle exchange, if you come around, back across from the boat transportation is shimmering sips this is where you can get the shimmering strawberry soft serve and waffle cone and their banana bread with the mixed compote um, that is vegan i tried it before it, it was okay um, also they have the tropical mimosas here and this is where you're going to get your prize if you do the emails fromage montage let's talk about some of the activities that you can do here across from shimmering sips is port of entry and you can pick up for ten dollars the remy's ratatouille hide and squeak scavenger hunt you're going to go around world showcase you're going to find remy in each country you're going to put the correct sticker to whichever country uh, food item he's holding, you're going to come back here and you're going to get a prize. Um, if you're watching this the day the video comes out, I will be doing this live at 5 p.m. I love doing these and if you're watching later, you can go and rewatch it. It's such a fun scavenger hunt, a fun game, and I always recommend doing it. Okay, so before we went around from Noodle Exchange to Shimmering Sips, but now we're going to come back and walk toward Canada. After the Noodle Exchange and Starbucks is Australia. This has returned. This was not here last year, but it has returned. Australia is offering the grilled sweet and spicy bushberry shrimp. Someone just yelled out, the shrimp's amazing. Uh, <laughs> the, they are also offering roasted lamb chop, a deconstructive pavlova, which is a pastry cream citrus macerated with berries and lemon myrtle meringue. And they have some alcoholic beverages. They have a Sauvignon Blanc, they have a Chardonnay, they have wine flights that you can do here. So I think a lot of people are really happy that Australia has returned. Across from Australia is Refreshment Port. Refreshment Port is here all year round, but during the festivals they always have some specialty items. They do the traditional poutine. They also have the braised beef poutine and they have a maple cheesecake here as well. Next to Refreshment Port is the Canada booth. Here at the Canada booth, you can get that famous Canadian cheddar and bacon soup that they normally serve at La Cellier Steakhouse here in Canada. You can also get that La Cellier wild mushroom and beef filet mignon. These are super popular items here, always a fan favorite. The next booth is super tricky to find. So when you're in Canada, you're going to see this like gate here and you'll see Appleseed Orchard and La Cellier Steakhouse. You're gonna walk this way because the next booth is the Appleseed Orchard. Last year, I believe that was in the World Showplace Pavilion, but they have moved it all the way to the back of the Canada Pavilion. I'm gonna keep following the path and then by the giant cave all the way to the right, you'll see the sign for the Appleseed Orchard. You're gonna come underneath the cave and you're gonna head inside and it smells amazing in here. It smells like serious apples in here it's it it really is so potent i walked in and went to the right and they have these little fun facts about different types of apples on this cute little cart these are super cute and a nice little learning experience as you eat and drink it is so busy in here. I'm gonna read off the menu to you. They have for food an apple crumble tart. They have apple chips. And then they have a long drinking list here. They have frozen apple pie, which is non-alcoholic. A cinnamon apple cider that's non-alcoholic. They have cider. They have like multiple different versions of cider. Um, and you can do a cider flight and a beer flight. This is amazing. After Appleseed Orchard, come back out to the main pavilion and you're gonna keep walking down. You're gonna find your first festival market booth. Here's where you're gonna find your festival pin. Uh, they have one pin here. They're gonna have more over in mouse gears. Here's what it looks like. It's actually so nice. Um, I'm not a pin trader, but I love, I think it's absolutely so beautiful. At the very end of Canada is where you can find the Jammeters at the Mill stage. They just finished up their performance. They are amazing. I absolutely love them so much. They are so fun. They play drums and percussion on like fun different things. And because it's food and wine, they play it on kitchen equipment.
next to the mill stage and the Jammeters is your next Joffrey's location. At this one, you're going to get the tropical tea breeze. It's an iced tea and frozen lemon with a splash of coconut syrup for $6.39. That actually sounds so refreshing. Just quickly showing you uh, World Show Place. The gates are closed last year and, and for the last uh, few festivals, there was a lot of booths inside there. I'm wondering maybe October 1st they'll put some things in there or if they'll do some other type of event in there during the festival as it goes on. Entering the UK, we have the Ireland booth, but this will not be happening until October 1st. I'm really excited for this one to come. Uh, so I will be back here October 2nd because October 1st, I'll be in Magic Kingdom for the 50th anniversary. And then I'll be here on October 2nd for the 50th anniversary stuff and for all of the uh, new booths that are opening up. So I was walking through the UK. Mary Poppins is doing socially distant meet and greets in the UK gardens. Hi, Mary. How are you? Fine too, thank you. How are you today? I'm practically perfect. Very glad to hear you wish to talk just want to let everyone quickly know in your festival passport, it does say that the Epcot piano player is playing and before she was playing in World Showplace, but that is closed. I found out kind of too late in the day, um, so I missed her performances, but she is in the UK pavilion in the back by the gazebo. So make sure you check her out because she's a wonderful piano player and she plays really fun Disney songs. Scooted my way into France for one of the most popular booths of the festival, the France booth. Here's where you can get the beignet au troll fromage, which is a warm beignet filled with three cheeses, a uh, croissant, Oh, escargot, which is escargot croissant with garlic and parsley. That sounds amazing. Uh, you can do a coco van, which is chicken braised in burgundy wine with bacon and puffed potatoes, and a creme brulee au grand marinier, which is vanilla cream, uh, vanilla creme brulee rather, with grand marinier liqueur. And here's where you can also get that uh, slushy, the famous brand slushies. Uh, they actually changed it from the one that was here last year, but they had the one that was here last year at Flower and Garden, which was the uh, rosé one. And now it is, uh, it looks like cranberry and pra um, passion fruit, but those slushies are absolutely delicious and so refreshing. And this booth always is such a hit. Leaving France, this booth is usually the Brazil booth. Um, I'm gonna assume it will still be that, but that will open October 1st. They're also going to build another kitchen between France and Morocco for the Belgian booth. Um, it's not built yet, I don't know where that will be, so check back in October. We're over in Morocco now, and we're actually going to head inside the Tangerine Cafe, Flavors of the Medina, because that's where the festival food is this year for Morocco. Super nice in here, I actually love that they did this. Um, here you can get for the festival fried falafel, pita, you can get grilled kebabs, the lemon garlic chicken, Moroccan spiced lamb, uh, beef tenderloin tips. Um, you can get, this is new, stone baked Moroccan bread with hummus. Um, and you can get the pistachio cake with the cinnamon pastry cream and candied walnuts, which is new. And I am definitely trying that. Plus it's so nice in here because you can, if you're lucky, there is very limited seating, obviously, but to be able to get a festival treat and eat inside is always such a perk. Very happy I got a table inside. I actually ended up getting, because this is brand new to this menu, as well as the pistachio cake, this is the Moroccan bread. It comes with hummus, and then I apologize if I butcher the names of these two dipping sauces, and I'm not sure which is which, but it comes with, so that one's hummus on the right, and it comes with zalouk and zaug dips. So I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly, but it looks really good. And then over here is that pistachio cake with cinnamon pastry cream. I'm gonna turn it around. You can see, look at that. Looks so good. I'm ready to dig in. I'm an adult, which means I get to have my dessert first because I can do that. And I'm gonna try the pistachio cake first because it looks amazing. Okay, I did forget to mention there are walnuts in here as well. And this is just a piece of chocolate. So let's do it. I hope it doesn't get all over me. Mm. That is so good. That is so good. And here's the deal. People skip over Morocco. And I don't know why. Because Morocco's food is always so good. This is really delicious this cake itself is so full of pistachio flavor the creams combined so well and then the walnuts inside give it that nice texture 
and then actually even the chocolate on top kind of just brings it all together. I think this is absolutely delicious. Um, obviously no nut allergy people can eat this, but um, if you're like a fan of pistachio muffin, you're gonna absolutely love this because that's what it really reminds me of. Because I guess, I guess a muffin is a type of cake. So yeah, 10 out of 10 recommends. Here's the Moroccan bread. It looks nice and like crispy on the outside and nice and soft on the inside, but nice and thin. I'm gonna rip a piece off. I'm gonna try a little bit of everything. Let's try the hummus first. I love hummus. Here we go. Okay, that is good hummus. As a person who eats a lot of hummus, that has so much flavor. There's like some citrusness, citri, citrus, citrusness to this, if that makes sense. Wow. Wow, that is tasty. Wow. I'm gonna try this green one. Now again, I'm sorry, I don't know which one is which. But look at that. That looks so good. That is so good. This reminds me of something. It's got like cilantro. It's like a it's like a cilantro chili lime sauce, but like Moroccan style, and it's so good. That is so delicious. And then lastly, we have the red one. Also pretty good, but after that green sauce. Green sauce is the clear winner. Hummus and then this one. This one's like tomato based. It's pretty good. Not my favorite, but wow, wow, wow. Just get it just to get this, this green sauce. That is, that is fire. Oh my God. Oh, she's leaving. Bye, Jasmine. So Jasmine just started recently doing socially distant meet and greets here in Morocco. We literally just missed her, but that was pretty cool. After Morocco, we have the grease booth. Here we have some spanikopita. We have the griddled cheese. This is this is part of the uh, emails for Maj, uh, montage. So I'm gonna get that tomorrow. I'm very excited to try it. And they also have lamb moussaka. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna just come back for the griddled cheese tomorrow. As a Greek person, I'm very curious of how they're doing it here. <laughs> but let's keep going. After the grease booth is another festival market booth. Here we can see some of the merch. We have this cute little kids bell be our guest shirt and it is branded for the food and wine festival we have this really cute uh sleeveless remy food and wine shirt over here we have these really lovely glasses um it's food and wine it has all like that this the cute design with remy and emile absolutely beautiful with all the countries on it we have these fabulous yoga pants with the food and wine design with all the countries absolutely love that Oh, and look down here, look at these beautiful spatulas, these silicone spatulas with the wood handle. Very cute. Cogsworth kitchen timer. That is really nice. We have ornaments, that's so nice. There's a lot of merch here. We have tumblers, this really nice sweatshirt. These are hilarious. This looks like a Disney garbage can, but it's like salt and pepper shakers. There's this tea of Remy with Spaceship Earth behind him. They have another version of the trash can salt and pepper shakers. Here's another ornament, another uh, t-shirt with a little pocket. We got a stemless wine glass. This is really nice too. Yeah, I'm gonna get that. Wow, this. oh I like that one. We have the trays that you can get here. These are really fun to get and then that way you can carry your food and drinks on the tray throughout the festival. We have another sweatshirt. Ooh, shaker bottles, that's so nice. We have tumblers. Oh, I love this one. I love the little tumblers. The corkle. I never know how to say this right. The corsicle. Cor corkicle? I don't know. Corsicle. Um, but those are so nice. And the last thing we have is this really cute sleeveless shirt. Made it to Japan. Here is the menu for this festival. They have teriyaki chicken buns. There's tempura shrimp sando, which is crunchy shrimp served with uzu, uzu, uzu crab. I'm going to say uzu crab. Green onions, eel sauce on a bun. It sounds so good. Spicy hako sushi. And they have a kochi lemon drop which is vodka, yazoo, and lemon juice garnished with a lemon jelly. That sounds delicious. They have some Ozeki Platinum Sake and a Ivanhoe Park Brewing Company, I'm gonna butcher that word, 
Uriusu rice lager. I apologize. I got the new menu item from Japan. This is the spicy hako sushi. This is spicy tuna, salmon serve, box style with red tempura crunch and volcano sauce. Let's do it. All right, here's that sushi. Let's do it. I forgot a fork, but that's okay. That's actually really good. The tuna is spiced really well. It a, has a little heat to it from the sriracha. I love a spicy mayo sriracha. I think that's delicious. I think the tuna itself is really good, and the sticky rice is really nice. I love sushi, and tuna is actually my favorite. If you're into sushi, this is definitely something to consider getting. Walking into the American Adventure, when you first walk in, uh, if you come from Japan, you have the funnel cakes, and we're gonna get to it because we're gonna get to funnel cakes. But I wanted to talk to you about the rest of the entertainment here at the at the festival, and it's over here at the American Gar America Gardens Theater, and you can see throughout the day Mariachi Cobra, and they're performing right now. They're a great mariachi band, and then the Voices of Liberty, which is a beautiful acapella singing group. They would normally, um, before closures, be found at the American Adventure singing the Rotunda. It would sound absolutely amazing. They still sound amazing here. I definitely recommend you coming and checking them out. And what isn't shown here is that Friday through Mondays they're gonna also have local Orlando bands come and play uh, today's opening day and it's a Thursday so they won't be playing today but it's nice to have that other option of entertainment this was very pretty, very pretty. Now that we talked about entertainment, let's come back over here to the funnel cakes because there is a special funnel cake for the festival. The funnel cake being offered for the festival is the mini candied bacon s'mores funnel cake topped with vanilla ice cream for $9.50. Let's do it. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. It's not that big. It's not like a regular big funnel cake. It's a mini funnel cake and it is just covered in s'mores and I'm ready for it. Just cut it open. Look how good that looks. Let's dig in. Okay, okay, I'm gonna do this quick because it's gonna get everywhere. Oh my god. This makes me question why I don't get funnel cakes every festival. That is so good. The vanilla ice cream with the crunchiness of the funnel cake and then all of the toppings. Basically the best thing I've eaten in a long time. That is absolutely delicious. It's a nice shareable piece to eat. Wow, and there's a reason why the funnel cake line is always long. That is just absolutely delicious. After the funnel cakes, we have a festival market that has not opened, but then we have another festival market place over here with some more merchandise. Okay, these are adorable, sweet as pie. They even have some ears. Awesome to the core. You have a pie plate, sweet as pie. You have the official festival cookbook, a festival rolling pin. Well, it's a Mickey branded rolling pin. That's really cool. Oh, Mickey and Spaceship Earth. That's really nice. Uh, you have the trays again, awesome to the core, and Mickey and Minnie's apple seed orchard jacket. This is so nice. This is like a really nice jacket. Heading toward the back of the pavilion, we have the Hops and Barley booth. The menu at Hops and Barley is that New England lobster roll. You got a hot beef sandwich with horseradish cream and pickled vegetables, and a freshly baked carrot cake with cream cheese icing, plus a list of different wines and beers and ciders, and you can do a beer flight here. So over here at the American Adventure Rotunda, we have a new booth called the Rotunda Bistro. I don't see a picture menu, so I'm gonna read off some stuff and we're gonna get one thing from here. So here we have the chilled smoked shrimp salad, the wild mushroom and truffle tart served with Gruyere and cream fraiche, and chilled crab and avocado parfait served with caviar. Um, and their alcoholic beverage here is a rosé. 
So you order outside here under the pavilion, I'm sorry, under the rotunda rather, and you get your food inside. It's so nice and air conditioned and cool in here. And then they added all of this extra uh, tables and seating and it's just the perfect place to come and cool off because it is hot in Orlando, <laughs> if you didn't know. Here's what I got from the Rotunda Bistro. This is the wild mushroom and truffle tart with Gruyere and cream fraiche. It looks so good. I'm a little worried that the pastry itself is gonna be a little mushy, but we'll give it a try. Here's what the inside looks like. Let's dig in. All right, here we go. Oh, wow. I am surprised and delighted. That is really good. I was worried the pastry was gonna be mushy. Actually isn't that bad at all considering this has probably been sitting out for a while. The flavors in the mushrooms and the cream sauce, wow, that is, that is so delicious. I have a very rational fear of mushrooms, but I did, this looked really good so I tried it and I'm glad I did. And now maybe I won't be so afraid to eat mushrooms all the time. Don't, I don't wanna get into it, it's a whole thing. But um, that's delicious. That is really delicious. Plus, you cannot beat that you get to eat it inside in air conditioning. Lastly, in the American Adventure is our third Joffrey's location. Their specialty uh, festival drink here is the cinnamon chai. It's refreshing iced chai with, topped with whipped cream and cinnamon for $6.39. To be honest, Joffrey's usually does like really good festival drinks, and this feels like super basic and really expensive for an iced chai. It just, I don't know. That's how I feel. Let me know how you feel in the comments, but I was considering getting one and they just didn't impress me this time. Walking into the Italy Pavilion, and I just want to quickly shout out, this is not part of the festival, but this has just opened. This is the new gelato um, stand here in the Italy Pavilion, Gelateria Toscana, and everyone has raved about it. I have not tried it yet, but if you have tried it, let me know what you feel, how you feel about it in the comments, or let me know if you want to try it, because I want to try it. Made it to the Italy Festival booth. The Italy Festival booth is offering mezzulin crocanti. I apologize if I, if I say that incorrectly. It's crispy half moon breaded mozzarella fried ravioli with pomodoro sauce for $12. We have ravioli grilled chicken ravioli with alfredo sauce, romano cheese, and a bambolini, which is, uh, this has been here many, many times, the cream filled Italian donut with raspberry and sugar. They have some sangria, some prosecco, um, and some wines, and they even have a pilsner, and ooh, they have an Italian margarita with tequila and limoncello. That sounds actually really good. Made it to Germany. Germany, you know, I'm gonna say one thing about Germany, they are consistent. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is the same menu, and I will say everything on here is really, really good. Um, just nothing is new. And you have obviously um, some beer options. You could do a beer flight. I really love the um, the first thing that is listed here. It's basically like a German version of mac and cheese, and it is delicious. And I highly recommend it. Next to Germany is the Alps booth, but this will not open until October first. This was in a different location last year, but now it is directly next to Germany. Across from the Germany booth, we have another festival market booth. In here, we have some German inspired merchandise we have beer steins we have coasters i mean everything here is very cute but it's not specific to food and wine but it is under the umbrella of a festival market um, merchandise booth after that german festival market booth is another one over here you have pins again and they have that same pin that we saw earlier in canada next to that is another festival market booth uh, here's some more festival merchandise we saw. I would say all this, but this one. Oh, well that's cute. That is really cute. And you can get this and then you can keep using this over and over again at the festival instead of reuse, uh, you know, getting uh, plastic forks and knives and spoon and super cute. And it's got like all the Epcot stuff on it. That's really nice. This is, if you're interested, $24.99. I think that's really expensive for what this is, but it is very cute. Across from that festival market booth, we have an art market booth. This is really pretty. They have pictures of, well, not pictures, paintings rather, of different wines and wine bottles. It's so beautiful. It smells like wood over here. She's actually, I think, painting right now. 
this was literally just finished being painted and she's painting something new right now that is so cool that this is just live happening right now. Across from the artwork is the Kenya booth. This will open in October, on October 1st. Next we have Refreshment Outpost. Let's see what they are offering for the festival this year. Their festival offering is called the Spicy Githery. It is served with white beans, pigeon peas, Ben's Original Quinoa and Ancient Grains Medley, and Kakachumbari Slaw. Wait, Kachubari Slaw. I apologize. And this is vegan. And it looks like, actually looks really nice and it's $4.75. Plus they are doing the Three Daughters Brewing Allspice Hard Cider here. After Refreshment Outpost before China, we have the India booth. This will not open until October 1st. But actually, this menu is already out for us to see. So on October 1st, they're going to have warm Indian bread. That's probably going to be really good. Korma chicken, Madras red curry, and a few drinks. Can't wait to come back in October for the India booth. Made it to China. China is one of the most popular booths. The line is literally so far down into Norway. Here's what they are offering for this festival. They have pan-fried chicken dumplings. They have... Zizrin beef bao bun and crispy fried pepper shrimp with spicy Szechuan noodles. Sounds amazing. They also have that mango bubble milk tea and they have that jasmine draft beer as usual, which I think is very good, um, and a couple other alcoholic beverages. Super popular place. Everything here is usually very delicious, but be prepared to wait. Uh, my advice, even even now though, it's still pretty long, uh, the line, but a lot of people head toward Mexico and you know, it, everyone always says, oh, you're wrong if you go toward Canada, but you're actually not because everyone wants to go toward Mexico. So if you go toward Canada, they're gonna have a lot less time to wait for things. and It'll be a lot less crowded because before over here this morning, it's, this was packed. Like this really isn't that bad because the line before went down past like this tree or further actually. Had to quickly pop into Norway because Queen Anna is doing socially distanced meet and greets. Oh, we're great. I'm going to take him on a date tonight. He doesn't know yet. He's oh been the ice harvesting today, so um, yeah, I'm going to try to Yeah, we can't really do a sleigh ride without Sven. I mean, we could go on a date without Sven, <laughs> I suppose, but I wanted to do a sleigh ride. Made it to Mexico, but the Mexico booth is over the bridge. So here we go. Okay, something smells so good here. Like. It's an amazing smell. Let's go check out the menu. Actually, it is the same menu as last year. The picture menu is all the way hidden in the back. They do this every time, and I don't understand why. Um, I had both the um, the chorizo and the taco ribeye last year, and a lot of people loved it, but I didn't really love it. But it does smell really, really good. Um, but you can also get, you know, margaritas here, Mexican craft beer, sangria. Maybe I need a margarita. I haven't had a drink yet. Yeah, let's go get a margarita. I ended up getting the El Tigre margarita. This is a very popular drink. It has been in the festival before. Um, it is made with Ojo de Tigre Mezcal instead of tequila. Um, and it's with pomegranate, pickly pear, pineapple, and ginger juices served on the rocks with a hibiscus salt rim. It looks so good, so refreshing. I can't believe I haven't had a drink today, but there was just so much new food to try. So let's do it. So as I said, this is not something new, but this is something that I've always wanted to try that for some reason I never did. So I'm really excited about this. Cheers. That is so good. The smokiness of that mezcal. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. That is smoky. I love the pomegranate flavor. This is so light and refreshing, but that smokiness of the mezcal makes it like super unique tasting. It's not too sweet either, which I'm really happy about because I love margaritas, but I hate when they're too sweet because then I just can't drink it. I don't like sugary drinks. This is delicious. I can't believe it took me this long to drink this. So good across from the Mexico booth is another festival market. Um, everything we've seen before, but in this one, they also have um, merchandise from the Mexico pavilion, like this You Complete Me avocado and uh, margarita uh, shirt. You can get La Cava del Tequila shot glasses and 
other types of different drinking glasses. You can get a hat. Um, so this is really cute that they have this. You don't have to go inside. Wait a second. Wait a second. We have found the pass holder exclusive merchandise, and it is with Figment. That is adorable, this tumbler with figment and all this food and food and wine 2021. They have, is this a pass holder exclusive? Yes, it is with Belle. That's very, very cute as well. And then we have celebrating pass holders with figment. That's actually really nice. And it says on the back, food and wine 2021, this. Oh no, do I have to bring this home? Because this is really, really nice. And it says celebrating pass holders. And I could put like stuff in here because I'm on an organization kick right now. Am I gonna take this home and my husband gonna be upset that I brought home this giant thing with figment on it? Maybe. Here is the pass holder magnet. It's very cute. I, it's really weird that they have figment for the pass holder and not Remy. I, I guess just it'd be different. This is really nice. This is a cutting board, like really good cutting board for pass holder. Here's another shirt with figment journey into culinary delight. On the back it says food and wine pass holder 2021. Here's another pass holder tumbler. It's with Remy and Emil. I love this one. I, no offense to Figment. I don't I don't hate Figment like a lot of people, but I prefer Remy. I think this is very cute. And lastly here is a Mickey one pass holder, sweet to the core, with Mickey on an apple. Here is a new booth. This is called the Swanky Saucy Swine, and it's next door to that festival market that we were just at with all the pass holder merchandise. Over here, part of this menu is part of the Emile's Fromage Montage. The crispy barbecue pork rinds with pimento cheese is part of the fromage montage. Um, then they also have roasted porchetta. They have soy glazed sticky ribs and a crispy pig ear salad, which I don't know about that. I don't know. Maybe it's good. And they have a couple of different beverages here. They have a Zinfandel. They have a Bloody Mary and a Pinot Noir. I don't know why that came out as Noir. Pinot Noir. I didn't even like get through my drink and I'm already slurring my words. We have made it to our final Joffrey's location for the festival. Here they are doing the double trouble chai, tantalizing iced chai with a single shot of espresso topped with whipped cream and cinnamon, uh, $6.39. This seems almost exactly the same as the one from the American Adventure. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. There's just like an extra shot, so it's a little different. Oh, I'm a little disappointed in the uh, Joffrey's locations this time. If I am not mistaken, we have made it to our final booth. It's Hawaii, and I love the Hawaii booth. This year, the Hawaii booth is located kind of in the middle when you walk down from Future World next to Disney Traders, well, across from Disney Traders, rather. They have the amazing, amazing pork sliders. They are so delicious. That was my favorite thing from the festival last year. They have now this year teriyaki glazed spam hash, tuna poke, and passion fruit cheesecake. Um, the passion fruit cheesecake is a part of the fromage montage. And then for drinks, they have Florida Orange Grove sparkling pineapple wine and Alani Sunrise. For those of you who don't know, Alani is a Disney resort in Hawaii. And then they have Kona Brewing Company Island PA really good menu. I really recommend those pork sliders. They are so fabulous. Just wanted to show you this cute little photo op at the very uh, end when you walk down from Future World in the middle. It's very, very cute. There's one also back up there. Um, it's not like where it's Flower and Garden and there's photo ops all over the, all over the park, but that one, the one in the front, are very, very cute. Last thing to see in World Showcase, it's one final festival market booth. Let's see if there's anything different in here. Everything in here looks the same, but for some reason they have some Canada stuff in here, um, like how they've been having some other country stuff in these festival market booths. But yeah, it looks like the same thing that we've been seeing and some Canada stuff. Just gonna quickly pop into Mouse Gear to see if there's any other festival merchandise that we didn't see around the park. So far, it looks like everything is the same for Pass Holder. I'm not sure if I pointed out the uh, coasters before, but 
uh, Journey into Culinary Delight and Figment is another pass holder coaster. Well, the only pass holder coaster. Uh, everything here looks the same. This is all the pass holder stuff again. Yeah, I think this is all the same from that booth we saw earlier. If you missed Flower and Garden, you can pretend you were here. This is actually a really cute uh, spirit jersey. I can dig it. But that's funny, and they have some leftover glasses too. And all this stuff is the regular merchandise, not the non-pass holder stuff, um, which we saw before. So I guess, I guess we saw everything. I'm surprised. Usually there are a couple of items in here in mouse gear that I don't see out in the parks, but not this time. Maybe just check if you come Yeah. because you never know when it comes to merchandise, they could totally just change everything over the next day. But as for right now, same as the outdoor festival markets. Well, my dudes, we did it. That was a tour of Epcot's International Food and Wine Festival 2021. So many great treats. I can't wait to come back tomorrow. If you're watching this tomorrow, then today, if that makes any sense. I'm gonna do the fromage montage to look out for that um, on Friday, Jan July, January. On Friday, July 16th at 5 p.m., I'm gonna be live here doing the uh, uh, Remy's Ratatouille Hide and Squeak. So if you missed that live, you can go rewatch it. I really recommend it because it's so much fun to go around World Showcase to find Remy. He's so cute and it's such a fun game. And I can't wait to see what the prize is this year. Um, I am so looking forward to trying more treats along the way during food and wine. I'm so excited to come back in October to try all the booths that will open in October. I think this was such a great um, foodie festival this year. I do wish, I like, I get so used to the other festivals like arts and flower and garden, so I wish there was more like art decor and a little more entertainment, but I, you can't really go wrong with the food here for food and wine. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video helps you out in any way. Uh, if you did like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, hit your bell notification so you don't miss anything that goes on this channel. And follow me on Instagram at Magical Hijinks. And until next time, my dudes, I hope you guys get into some hijinks very, very soon. Ha ba bye.